Dr. Fauci is on the leadership council for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. In January of 2017, Anthony Fauci told a crowd at Georgetown University that there would be a surprise outbreak during the Trump presidency. There is no question that there will be a challenge to the coming administration in the arena of infectious diseases, both chronic infectious diseases in the sense of already ongoing disease, and we have certainly a large burden of that, but also there will be a surprise outbreak. You have anything else, Oder Loy? No, sir. All no, right. Sir. And convenient distraction from COVID murders. Look at your screen. Now, this is this comes out of Fox, Elder Lawyer. Mm-hmm. So 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 we, we're gonna walk you through this real quick because a lot of our people in our community, in the black community, the the, uh, the Hispanic community, rarely looks at Fox. Okay. This is a guy, Tucker, right? Mm -hmm. Check out what he said concerning COVID-19. Millions of Americans remain subjected to unprecedented restrictions on their personal lives, their daily lives, their family's lives. The coronavirus lockdowns continue in many places. You may not know that because it gets no publicity, but it's true. And if you're living under it, you definitely know. As a result of this, tens of millions of people are now unemployed. A huge number of them have no prospects of working again. Many thousands of small businesses are closed and will never reopen. More Americans have become dependent on drugs and alcohol, seen their marriages dissolve, become clinically depressed. Some of them delayed their weddings. Others were banned by the government from burying their loved ones in funerals. Some Americans will die of cancer because they couldn't get cancer screenings. Some unknown number have taken their own lives in despair. Others have flooded the streets to riot because bottled up rage and frustration take many forms. The cost of shutting down the United States and denying our citizens desperately needed contact with one another is hard to calculate, but the cost has been staggering. The people responsible for doing all of this say they have no regrets about it. We faced a global calamity, they say. COVID-19 was the worst pandemic since the Spanish flu. That flu killed 50 million people. We had no choice. We did the right thing. That's what they're telling us. Is it true? The answer to that question matters, not just because the truth always matters, but because the credibility of our leaders is at stake here. This is the biggest decision they have made in our lifetimes. They were able to make it, they rule because we let them. Their power comes from us. So the question now and always is, are they worthy of that power? That's not a conversation they want to have. And right now they don't have to have that conversation because right now, all of us are distracted and mesmerized by the woke revolution underway outside. They just created a separate country in Seattle, huh? And as we said, we'll bring you the latest on that in just a minute. But we do think it's worth for a minute taking a pause to assess whether or not they were in fact lying to us about the coronavirus and our response to it. And the short answer is this, yes, they were definitely lying. As a matter of public health, we can say conclusively the lockdowns were not necessary. In fact, we can prove that. And here's the most powerful evidence. States that never locked down at all, states where people were allowed to live like Americans and not cower indoors alone, in the end turned out no worse than states that had mandatory quarantines, the mm. state you probably live in. The states that did lock down at first but were quick to reopen have not seen explosions of coronavirus cases. All of this is the opposite of what they said would happen with great confidence. The media predicted mass death at places like Lake of the Ozarks and Ocean City, Maryland, places where the middle class dares to vacation. But those deaths never happen. In the end, the Wuhan coronavirus turned out to be a dangerous disease, but a manageable disease like so many others. Far more dangerous were the lockdowns themselves. For example, in New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Massachusetts, panicked and incompetent governors forced nursing homes to accept infected coronavirus patients. And as a result, many thousands died, and they died needlessly. This is all a remarkable story, but it's going almost entirely uncovered. The media would rather tell you why you need to hate your neighbor for the color of his skin. 
The media definitely don't want to revisit what they were saying just a few weeks ago when they were acting as press agents for power drunk Democratic politicians. Back then, news anchors were ordering you to stop asking questions and obey. All right, so while most Americans are staying inside, or should be, right, if they're not out protesting like fools, they're not happy about being told to stay home. Staying home saves lives. And the rest of us should be staying at home for our <laughs> mothers and the people that we love. And to keep us farther apart will ultimately bring us closer together in this cause. Our collective conscientious actions. Staying home. Oh. If you love your mother, you will do what I say. Turns out cable news anchors don't make very subtle propagandists. And then Memorial Day arrived in May, and some states started to reopen. Millions of grateful Americans headed outdoors for the first time in months, and the media attacked them for doing that, called them killers. Swimming with your kids, they told us, was tantamount to mass murder. Jam-packed pool parties at the Lake of the Ozarks Resort and other places over the holiday weekend. Few, if any, people were wearing masks or practicing social distancing, hardly. Packed into mm. overcrowded pools despite the ongoing pandemic. Let's face it, the weirdness of being that bunched up in what looks like a kind of human stew. Frankly, a lot of the people in those crowds, <laughs> they thought they were, you know, standing up for wow. what the president believes in. And that is not to care about the public safety part of this. Look at this, I mean, this is it's kind of crazy considering we're in the middle of a, of, a, of, a, of a global. These people are just getting together, having a good time, folks. Now, mind you, this is the Democrat, CNN, the liberal news telling you, stay in your home, be mm -hmm. controlled, don't have fun, don't see family, don't bury your family, don't get married. Don't mm. gather and have a good time. These are Democrats, folks. These children are having fun in a pool, and it's the Democrats saying this. Mm -hmm. But 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 hold up. You're looking at what? George Floyd? Not realizing, folks, they, they see you're triggered going out marching for George Floyd, and the distraction is they just killed your grandmother a few weeks ago. They just killed your brother or sister a few weeks ago. They just killed your family and wouldn't allow you to bury your own family a month ago and you sat in your house scared saying nothing. Didn't protest, didn't ask questions, I mean, as one person quipped, you know, that, that's, that's curving the curve. That's not flattening it. A massive crowd of people crammed together. As it and here's a perfect example of one of the special need guys we were talking about amongst our community. This lemon guy who was compromised in more, ma more ways than one by men. How did this guy become the Walter Con Cronkite for our community? This unrepentant, moist man represents us. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm talking about. It's an ordinary holiday weekend, despite the risks of a virus that has killed more than 98,000 people. Boy, that montage was the opposite of a Mensa meeting. Has that much dumbness been captured on tape ever? The last clip you saw was from May 25th. That was just over two weeks ago. 98,000 people are dead. How dare you leave your house? You don't work in the media. You're not essential. But it didn't take long for that message to change completely. In fact, it took precisely five days. Here's the same brain-dead news anchor you just saw less than a week later. He's no longer <laughs> angry, you'll notice, about Americans going outside as long as they are rioting and burning and not doing something sinful like swimming. Now, the same guy told you that stay in the house, stay in the house, everyone is gonna die. Now check out what this, this guy says once he's triggered with the narrative that will now distract us from our family members mm. being killed by, un, under, by COVID doctors. And folks, what we're gonna bring out today is deep because these are foreign doctors being brought in our communities to kill us and then go back 
to areas of Pakistan or uh, uh, parts of uh, India. Mm -hmm. These are foreign doctors being flew in, knowing that eventually we would figure out what was going on and begin to actually exact revenge. So they knew the numbers were actually fudged, lawyer, mm -hmm. and they also knew that they were killing us under this COVID thing and we would, we would eventually come together and talk about it. Right. So before we can come outside and actually say what happened to our family with the last few months, magically, a black man get New killed by a white cop. Shows officers taking George Floyd out of his vehicle. In surveillance video obtained by CBS News, a handcuffed Floyd is walked across the street toward a police car. In the distance, you can see them all fall. Three officers have Floyd pinned on the ground while another stands over them. You can hear Floyd pleading for air. Please let me stay here. I can't breathe all the time. The officer who pressed his knee to Floyd's neck has been identified as Derek Chauvin. He doesn't let up until the 46-year-old's listless body is put on a stretcher. It works every time. Mm -hmm. They didn't want us to discuss and talk about our family that was just put down like dogs for about two, three months. Right. So now the same guy who says, stay in your home, you're going to die, you're going to kill everyone if you go out, is now promoting go coming outside to riot. Right. It's okay to come outside now mm. so that now you can, you can follow the narrative that would lead to what? Military on the street and eventually defunding the police so that now the military can become the police within the black communities. It's not the white communities have to worry about that. I, I drove in the suburbs and then I went into North Philly on 52nd Street and seen what? You got it. Tanks in Philadelphia. Mm. Now check this out. Hold who's, up. Don't judge. Uh, oh, no, go ahead. go ahead. Yeah, who's bringing this information out? Who's bringing it out? Who's bringing the information out? Now, some people will look at this and it's like, it's like this guy saying, okay, grass is green, water is wet, the sky is blue, right? But because he's saying it, it can't be true. Those things can't be true because he's saying it. Because he's a Republican. Right. <laughs> you know, he's for the racist Republic media. So he, what, what he's saying right now cannot make sense. It cannot be true because he's a Republican. OK, that's the foolish mindset we've been subdued to not being able to critically think for ourselves. And do I agree with everything this guy says? I'm a Bible man. Exactly. I believe in Christ. Exactly. OK, but truth is truth. Mm. I don't care what side, whether he's left, right, or in the middle. Exactly. What he's saying is what? Truth. That mm -hmm. we were duped and we're still being duped. Because now it's our people now who would have l larger and longer quarantines and all that. Mm -hmm. Military within our communities. That's right. why they say defund the police. Well, where's mm -hmm. the money going? Is it going to us to help us so that we can now financially finance ourselves to protect ourselves from racism? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. We can filter that money into the military now. You're ISIS now. You're Al Qaeda now. Mm -hmm. See? And I'm going to go into the financial component of this in a moment. Because then, because they always talk about throwing money at the special needs group amongst our community. I'm going to keep on using that word tonight. When really, it shouldn't be that way. The model you should do for us is the same model that was done for the Jews who, 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 were, who were killed in Germany. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the model. Because with that model, we can have enough finances to protect ourselves from the police and from racists. Okay? With that amount of money, that they, that, they, that they have disguised under the guise of foreign aid, that amount of money allow us to fund our own defense against mm -hmm. racism. Racism will be magically done if y'all filter all that foreign aid that's going to them to us. We don't want prison reform because they say, okay, y'all Negroes are used to going to prison anyway. I'll give you less years. No, <laughs> no, nah, we don't want no prison reform. Right. You give us the same thing they receive and we can make sure our children don't go to prison anymore. Mm 
-hmm. We can build our own schools. We can build our own everything. And we don't have to worry about the reason why they're in prison. Because why? They're in a systematic warfare against what? Their finances. They, they, they don't have the same opportunities finance, financially as other races. So they're predisposed to crime. And I'm sure if they didn't have foreign aid and reparations that was given to the Jewish people for what happened to them, they would still be poor and not be able to defend themselves from racism mm -hmm. and from Nazism. Mm -hmm. So we don't need no prison reform. Right. Okay. We don't, because you're saying that, okay, you're not going to, that means we're going to give you less time, but you're still going to jail, Negro. Mm. We don't want no prison reform. And we, we don't want none of that. We don't want the police defunded. No. If you really want to fix things, you deal with the morally sound of our community and fix things with the same model you gave the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Mm. So that we don't have to go to politicians for the answer. We'll fix it ourselves. That's right. Okay, just put just putting that out there. Here's yeah. another solution. Yeah. Let's take down a few statues of uh, yeah. racists. Yeah, no, I'll tell you what, let's just take a bat. Let's let's take a bat to, to Christopher Columbus hat. Right. I mean, that's the, yeah, Christopher Columbus statue, we pulling it down. Simple as a day is old. They took the country already. Exactly. Take the statue. You think they you think they give a D A M N about a statue when they got the country already? Mm-mm. I think it's a little too late to go. To, you know, to go after Christopher Columbus, huh? Right. He's pushing daisies, folks. Mm. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, that's poor statues. We don't want no example of white supremacy. We don't want no example of, of anything racist that every time I walk by, I'm reminded of what happened to my fathers when we're getting gunned down and killed and destroyed. And, 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 and we're not even economically on the level to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. But you want to talk about Christopher Columbus? Right. Wake up, folks. I mean, mm. I, I, I'm surprised a white guy didn't go and tear the, the damn thing down. He don't care. He got the country. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, we fall for it every time. We now. fall. I don't know. This, this MK Archer, when it comes to racism, is deep on us. We can forget about everything that's happening to us if there's a white man doing something against a black guy. But I digress. I digress. Let's finish here. Country was started by looting CVS and setting fire to Wendy's. Of course, you took American history. You knew that. Andrew Cuomo's brother must have been in the same history class because he had the same reaction. America's major cities are filled with people demanding this country become more fair, more just. And please show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful because I can show you that outraged citizens are the ones who have made America what she is and led to any major milestone. So now they're fermenting what? Protesting Tuesday the same night, news, CNN, all the liberal news, the left charged. news who say it, stay Some in your home, you're going to die. Don't go hug mama. They even told you that. Don't go see your mother. Crowd. Mm -hmm. Our sister station in because we're going to kill her. Don't worry about it. We'll give you an urn of her ashes, okay? We may not even give you that because her ashes might have COVID. We're going to put your mother down like a dog. Don't go outside. The same people that just told you that are now saying... This country was built on protesting. Go outside, burn it up, tear it down. Because why? The powers that be already have the replacement. Mm -hmm. That's right. All power goes back to the ten horns. So, so what are you doing? You're tearing down the only thing that's left. You're speeding up your own demise. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm with it, actually, if you want to go ahead and do it. Because we got next. That's right. Okay? Yell criticize blame and shame citizens have no duty to check their outrage wow so one minute they were mass murderers for going outside now they're sam adams they're patriots they're american heroes mm. if all of this seems like a pretty abrupt pivot fret not rioting is not a health risk as long as it helps the democratic party's prospects in the november election rioting will not spread the coronavirus Sounds implausible, but we can be certain of that because last week, hundreds of self-described public health officials signed a letter saying so. 
they announced that the Black Lives Matter riots are a vital contribution to public health. In effect, they're wow. in a... Did you hear that? You hear that? Wow. wow. Mm-hmm. Now, we know Black Lives Matter is a George Soros creation. To do what? Again, fund the special people amongst our community who are, who are, who are all messed up in the brain. To, to now do what? Use their political platform to get our people compromised by protesting and stirring up the community. And it's enough our people didn't have an opportunity to go out already after being cooped up in the house after the same news told them to stay quarantined. So no soon as, no soon as a protest happens, Of course, if they're telling the same news that you look at every day, that the left is telling you to go out and go out, you're going to go out just for the sake of of, of being quarantined for three months. Mm. It's an opportunity not to stay being, you know, to be held prisoner in your home. A total distraction, folks. Mm. And convenient distraction from COVID murders. Listen to this. Look at your screen Make sure you show this to everyone you know, because when we're bringing it like this and we're bringing it hard tonight, okay? When you're bringing it like this, nine times out of 10, this video won't live to see tomorrow. If it does, all praises be to the Almighty. Look at your screen. Steve here. Do you see what's happening in this country? I mean, do you really see what's happening in this country? The globalists and the Luciferians through the United Nations, through the WHO, through the deep state corporate media, and through all of those so-called leaders that carry out their division and strife and lies. This one world government, new world order is being fast tracked in your face. So what happens, people come in like this 37 year old and what was he complaining of or what was going on? Respiratory distress, he didn't have COVID either. He, he did not have COVID. 37 year old young man. I, ha- I took care of him. I have the same type of um, results from his chart as I do with my other a patient. Nurse. It was like the day before. Into- Folks, what do you see in here? A nurse who was treating a 37 year old black young man who had a regular respiratory issue. The same way sometimes when the weather changed, I, sometimes not too often sometimes i have asthma asthma symptoms but it's more so an allergy well this 37 year old young man came into the hospital during the COVID scare listen to what happened to this young man a nurse was trying to help this black young man listen fine on the yeah. rebreather and then they intubated and then he got a pneumo and then they put in a tube and then and now he's 37 years old and dead and now he's 37 years old and dead now check it out she said that she knew how to treat this young black man 37 years of age a foreign doctor from india that no one knew came in and told her no nah, you have to understand coming coming out of the gate 90 percent of them are going to die so we have to accept the fact that mm. so he came in the hospital expecting to kill 90 percent of the patients in our community mm. listen mm-hmm. that's what i'm seeing like all these negative tests and they're and they're putting them on these fans. It hopeful that they'll get it. They're being put on these COVID floor is murder. Erin Marie Olszewski. They, she said it's murder. You notice how many of our family in the past went to the hospital for one thing, and they claim they died of pneumonia. When Bernie Mac went to the hospital for one thing, and they claim he died of pneumonia. Remember when Bernie Mac. They said he died of pneumonia. When they put you in an induced coma and put the trach down your throat, they can induce pneumonia. So they'll lie to you and claim that that person died naturally, caught pneumonia in the hospital, when what they're not telling you is that they can induce the coma and induce the pneumonia. 
and eventually you'll die with the trach in you. It's a form of euthanization for humans. Listen. Terry Nurse working at the epicenter of the epicenter of the epicenter, which is supposed to be New York, Elmhurst Hospital, Queens, where we are told the most people are dying of COVID, 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 COVID. Not scared, catching all this uh, coronavirus. According to medical science, this must be the dangerous spot in the world at this moment. In addition to our courageous doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers, and the problem with this one is the contagion. It's so contagious. Nobody's ever seen anything like that where it's so contagious. You can be feet away and just talking to somebody and catch it. Uh, you can catch it, you know how long it can live on surfaces, so things that nobody even thought of, the level of contagion. Are there a lot of dead bodies getting taken out? No. no. Are you guys getting overworked? No. Are there dead bodies being taken out every day? No. <laughs> She's a hero, okay? She went undercover in the hospital with video camera with audio, talking to nurses, talking to doctors. And she was interviewed at length over an hour and 10 minutes. There she is on your screen. This is a major gigantic smoking gun on what is happening. I'm pulling up like their laboratory results. So if you look here, you'll see COVID-19 bioreference lab. Here are the test results. As you can see, 5-1-2020 at 17-16, uh, not detected. They test for a second time, 5-4-2020 um, at 17-59, not detected. So both of those are next. So what she did is she went under the undercover and seen that these people didn't have COVID at all. They were tested and it says COVID is not detected. 37 year old black man being institutionally killed, but yet not one person protests for this man who was killed in the hospital. But you're out there for George Floyd. Scroll up to the top. This is my patient. They are on a vent and they are being called COVID-19 confirmed. Droplet in contact and eye protection. Aaron Marie. So first they was negative, but then after they killed them, then they say that it was COVID-19 confirmed. Mm. And then they'll tell the family that they died of COVID-19. Now the family couldn't come in at this time because that person was quarantined due to this disease. So your family member died. You couldn't come in there and save them. They put them down, your family down like a dog and told you couldn't come in there. Why? Because they, was, they had this contagious disease from Wuhan, China. And then if you try to push too far against us, we need to find out through contact tracing whether or not they were around you for the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you keep on pushing, you Negroes in that neighborhood after we done put down your family like a dog. We're going to find out if they was at mama's house and quarantine her. Or the sister house and quarantine her and bring them in and put them down like dogs. So shut up. That's what they're telling you. So our people were so scared under this, this confused cloud of COVID-19 and coronavirus. 
our people, we didn't know what to do. So we were afraid to go and save our family in fear of what it meant for us if they could prove we were next to them between the last two weeks. Mm. Video camera in the hospital, undercover, for an extended... And, and another thing, Black Lives Matter said nothing while they were putting down our families like dogs. Because why? They're not getting financed to stand up against the campaign against mm -hmm. us. Right. George Soros don't pay money for that. Exactly. The Zionist <laughs> media don't pay money to the left for standing up against abortions and how they kill us under coronavirus and all that. They get paid for doing what? Towing the Democrat destructive line against us. That's what they get paid for. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm not just once. Audio in the hospital. As she said, put on ventilators. Put on ventilators. This is very serious treatment. What's happening at this hospital? Reality. I compare this hospital to a third world country. I've been in a third world country hospital in Iraq. The Iraq hospital is better than this one. And that says a lot. I've been there. I, I've had, I've been in both hospitals. There are good nurses that work there too. Like I have made good friends with a lot of the nurses that do work there. There's good people but they're outnumbered. What, so what happens? The people come in like this 37 year old and what was he complaining of or what was going Respiratory on? Respiratory distress. He didn't have COVID either. He, he did not have COVID. And how do we know that? I, ha I took care of him. I have the same type of um, results from his chart as I do with my other patient. It was like the day before intubation who was fine on the rain breather. And now he's 37 years old and dead. That's what I'm seeing. Like all these negative tests, and they're and they're putting them on these vents. It, hopeful that they'll get it. They're being put on these COVID floor is murder. It, it straight up is. It is setting these people up for failure based on. Okay, it's murder. It's murder. What does she decide to do? Erin Marie Olszewski. She decides to expose everything that's going on and laying it out to the public and to any public officials that want to know what exactly is happening. Because they're all scared. Everybody's scared. And everybody's scared to stick up for themselves. And I've called a lot of doctors unethical to their face. And they deserve it. Calling doctors unethical to their face and they deserve it. She deserves every amount of support we can give her because she's put herself at great risk in many ways. And we're, this is in the United States, and this hospital is treating low income, mostly, um, people. And it almost makes me feel like they think these people are disposable. And they're not, they're, they're, they're people, you know, everybody, People are not disposable, you know, especially, especially these, the ones that... Now, I'm going to, I'm going to show you something. I said earlier, Elder Lawyer, how we're not to follow what the media is trying to uh, uh, promote and look at white people as the enemy. And that white people should not look at the news and view black people as the enemy. These are the ill-informed segments of our population. Now, this woman right here, a white woman, mind you, is doing more for our people standing up, losing her job and everything than Black Lives Matter has ever done for black people. Mm -hmm. Right now. This white woman right now have done more for black people and standing up and putting her job on the line than Black Lives no Matter has. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Struggling day in and day out, the hard workers, you know, like 
trying to reach that American dream and they're not given a chance because they're brought to this place where nobody cares. And is there uh, a, an understood financial incentive to diagnose COVID? Yeah, of course. So in the hospital that I'm in right now, it's all COVID at this point. It's all COVID. Financial incentive to diagnose people with COVID. Their own tests are negative. They're diagnosed with COVID. And again, what does that mean? It isn't just a game they're playing to get money. It is that because the insurance payouts, as I've described before, are considerably higher when you have a patient come into the hospital and is diagnosed as COVID. We understand that. We're talking about something a lot more serious than that for the patient, which is they're put on a train from the point of the diagnosis in this hospital onto ventilators. Highly risky procedure. It's not just, oh, I'll put them on a vent. No. The people that are working these things have to know exactly what they're doing, have to be doing it for exactly the right reason with the individual patient, if absolutely necessary. Mm. This is not a one size fits all. It's much worse than just the ventilator. There's more involved on this train to death and nowhere than just being put on a ventilator, which itself is dangerous enough. Using the wrong protocol, too much pressure on the lungs, collapsing the lungs, destroying the patient's life, etc. Pneumonia that leads to death. I guess the word traveled after that. Now, now check this out. I'm gonna let you hear the rest of this, right? But I'm gonna show you how following the most high and not being triggered by the media helps our people. And this is what watchmen, those who are true leaders are supposed to do in times of crisis. Not one person, I'm talking about thousands upon thousands of members that are baptized in the, in, in the gathering of Christ church. Not one, and may the most high bless us and keep us this way, not one person died of COVID-19 in our church because they were informed. Now, a couple of weeks ago, there was a brother and sister that got in an accident, right? They were direct family members of someone in our church. Lawyer, you gave me this testimony. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they, they're, actually, they're actually members as, as well. They're members as well. Yes, okay. Sir. Members of the church got in an accident, went into the hospital. The hospital weren't even trying to even think about treating their wounds for the accident. Automatically, they were trying to determine if someone had COVID-19. Mm. So instead of treating their accident, they were trying to get the family to agree to give their family member, quote unquote, a COVID test and was trying to threaten that if you don't get a COVID test, we won't treat you. See, and immediately they called elders saying, what can we do? And be like, and we made it clear. You bet they, and then they were talking about putting them on the ventilator. I said, you better not go to sleep. You better not be on the ventilator. OK, because they will kill you and say it's COVID-19. OK, so they get you in a state of total fear first. And if they put you down, if they induce you into a coma, they got you. Mm -hmm. OK, and because of this, our brothers and sisters who were in compromised situations, lived through it. There was another brother who was amongst the church years ago. And soon as we found out that this brother was in the hospital, I, what I say, lawyer, make sure you call him and you talk to him every day in the midst of a COVID thing and direct him each day to make sure nothing is going on with him. And in a few days, because they knew there was someone on the outside who cared for the brother, he was what? He was released and he's home now. Safe, no issues, 
He's fine. Mm -hmm. Correct, Elder mm -hmm. Lloyd? Yes, sir. But the pastors and preachers out there, simple as the days old, are following what the news is saying mm -hmm. and have left their position, position as watchmen for the God, for, for our God. They have more trust in this system and the Democratic Party than they do the God of the Bible who they claim called them to, to their ministry. Okay, not one person in our church died under some COVID-19, not one, because they were informed and they trust in, in the God they serve. Finish listening. You mentioned earlier that this, that this is a common occurrence where people come in able to speak and they just have low oxygen levels and then and they're put on a vent. Is, is so what what's what, what's going on there um i don't know i honestly I, I have no idea how they're assuming everybody is just the same it, there's no individuality anymore these residents i think a lot of them are just stone cold you know there's no emotion and they don't view people as people anymore and it's really sad like we came i came a little bit later you know after the big rush but there was still a lot of people coming in and a lot of us are were just in shock within the first couple days you could see exactly what was going on my bigger problem with this whole scenario is when they intubate people who don't need it yeah and it looks very clear to me that they're just pushing it you almost feel like you were literally living in the twilight zone Living in the twilight zone, intubating people that don't need it, meaning putting them on ventilators when they absolutely don't need it. It's murder. A trusted emergency room doctor, not at this hospital, another hospital, said, one of the things that these doctors now don't realize is that many elderly people live with chronically low levels of oxygen. Is it optimal? No. Do they survive? Yes. It's just what is happening to them as they get older, as they get diagnosed, of course, with multiple uh, conditions and are treated with toxic drugs, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, they survive. But they come to a hospital like this, which, as uh, Aaron says, the residents there, they're not working like true professionals that are really competent and understand from experience what's going on. What killed him? Was being, did the vent kill him? Yeah, oh yes. They're so sedated. He had probably eight or nine drips. It's all sedation. It's all sedation and uh, paralytics. So you are asleep. It is essentially like you're, you're under, you know, you're in surgery, you know, and they put you under like that um, for a good month straight. There's no way you can recover from something like that. You're brain dead if you do. What she's talking about there is not just the fake COVID <laughs> diagnosis. Let me tell you. And see, this is this is why I hope our people, I hope our people begin to think critically on the next level. And I understand what y'all saying when someone write in the comment, Elder Lawyer, Republicans too, Republicans too. You don't realize that response is part of the programming. Automatically, that becomes a diversion mm -hmm. when you say <clears throat> Republican too. Because again, I didn't play these videos because these people were Republican. Right. I played it because they were given critical analysis on a scenario that we're not being actually uh, uh, taught about amongst Democrats. Listen to this clearly. When someone say that Democrats are bad, it's not to say that Republicans are good. That's the programming that automatically triggers in our minds. Mm -hmm. That's part of the programming. Right. Now, the reason why I emphasize on Democrats being bad and don't talk about the Republicans like that is because our people predominantly vote Democrat. Mm -hmm. 
I don't have to say what the Republicans are doing because we're not voting for Republicans. Mm -hmm. So who's damaging us then? Who's damaging us? So I'm trying to lift our analytical, uh, 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 our analytical senses to the next level because automatically the programming in, in, in the United States and in the world have programmed us to think that if Democrats, if we say Democrats are bad, that that means Republicans are good when no one said that. So it's about staying focused. I don't have to tell you about the, what the Republicans are doing because we don't vote Republican. Mm -hmm. It's the Democrats that have destroyed us. We've only voted Democrat. Now. On the train to the ventilator, and she's not just talking about the patient being given a light muscle relaxer while on the ventilator. What killed him? Was being, did the vent kill him? Yeah, oh yes. They're so sedated. He had probably eight or nine drips. It's all sedation. It's all sedation and uh, paralytics. So you are asleep. It is essentially like you're you're under, you know, you're in surgery, you know, and they put you under like that um, for a good month straight. There's no way you can recover from something like that. You're be brain dead if you do. Massive sedation. The person never wakes up under a ventilator, sedated, isolated, no friends, no family permitted, dies. The endless amounts of economic. Let me make it clear about this Democrat Republican uh, um, uh, uh, thing. You have to look, you have, folks, really focus on who they lump us in with. I need y'all to really think about that. To say you're a Democrat, right? Okay. Just say everything you're saying, Republicans are totally racist, they're the worst, and all that. Okay. But look what they lump us in with. In order to be a Democrat, you must be lumped up, you must be now lumped in with baby killers. Mm -hmm. Those that would that say that women have a right to kill babies. They lump you in. Black people now is in agreement with killing their own children. Look what they lump you in with. Then they'll lump you in with all of the perversions within our communities that have always destroyed our communities. Molesters and, and sexual deviants and all that. And they'll lump us in with them and say, well, okay, let's lump them in with them too. So all, all the rights go, go to these sycophants that they lump us in as blacks being Democrats. That's what they lump us into. They lump us into saying that we're underprivileged, we need someone to help us so that we don't have the fortitude ourselves to stand up and say, listen, no one have to give me anything. That have been a crutch to me. I don't need some white person coming to the suburbs and saying, let me adopt your little black child. No, mm -hmm. I need to be able to take care of my children myself. Exactly. exactly. So, so they, lump, they, they, lump, they lumped us in. Black people being Democrats have, be, have become the handicap of racists. So look what they lump you into in being Democrat. The pe are you really associated with the things they want to lump you in with? And I'm not saying Republicans are good. Mm -hmm. But someone have played a sick trick on us. If white people are the group that's more so for family, less taxes, less government, they are against the killing of babies. And now white people are known as the pure because they're dealing with a, 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 a party that's against the killing of babies, family, less government and black people are lumped in with the one-eyed limping midgets mm -hmm. someone playing a sick trick on us like hold up i should be in agreement with family less government intrusion less taxes god mm -hmm. satanist 
are aligned with the Democratic Party. So someone is playing a, a sick trick on us. That we're lumped in with all what's bad as Democrats. Something, somebody, this is a sick trick, folks. So that's what I'm saying. Look what we agree with. And don't say you don't agree with it because when you pull the ballot for Democrat, these are all the talking points for your politicians. Mm -hmm. We're going to do more for LBGTQ. We're going to give the woman the right to choose. That's killing babies. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're pulling the lever for. So we just hit, 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 hitting straight today. So that now you're saying, well, okay, well, Donald Trump is racist. Which way do we go? God. That's the way you go. The Bible. Let me finish up because I have a lot to cover. The health destruction. You won't use like other treatments that are being that are successful around the world and I had a conversation with a doctor about this. Are you guys doing like different sorts of like treatments? Because I know like nothing works. They have Hold up. Now she's asking the foreign East Indian doctor. So the, the nurse is asking. She she taped it privately. They have, yeah, but I mean, you know. They're coming out with different things. And the doctor says, I know. Listen to this foreign doctor they brought in our community. Listen. Yeah, but I mean, there's, you know, they're coming out with different things I that know. are in the testing It's phase. the same thing. They come with a platform and that kills more people than actually save. Uh -huh. So that's one. And he said that they don't work anyway. And I told him, well, obviously what you guys have going on here isn't working so what's the harm in trying? I don't expect any of these people to survive. Uh -huh. 90% of them would die. Hold up. They brought in a foreign East Indian doctor who came in the hospital that we thought came in to care and save us. And he said, I don't expect any of these people to survive. What people are he t is he talking about? Black people. I don't expect any of these people to survive. And the nurse is looking like, huh? And he responds back, 90% of them will die. Now, mind you, the Bible tells us that out of all of Israel, there will be left, what, Elder Lawyer? 10%. A tenth. Mm -hmm. A tenth. So what he's saying is, well, according to God, if they're disobedient, 90% of them are going to die anyway, so I'm here to kill them. 90% of them will die. I'm not here to heal them. I'm here to put them down like dogs. Listen again. And wh why you lot, why you all are out there knocking down statues, okay, still in Xboxes, mm -hmm. tearing the head off of, off of a right. statue that doesn't mean anything, while you're burning down things, understand what they did to your family a few, just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Listen to what he said sorts of like treatments because I know like nothing works nothing have, works yeah but I mean there's you know they're coming out with different things I that know. are in the testing it's phase. the same thing they come with a platform and that kill more people than actually save uh -huh. so that's one and he said that they don't work anyway and I told him well obviously what you guys have going on here isn't working so what's the harm in trying I don't expect any of these people to survive I don't expect any of these people to survive. Listen. And I told him, well, obviously what you guys have going on here isn't working. So what's the harm in trying? I don't expect any of these people to survive. 90% uh, of them will die. I mean, it's just me. Are you kidding me? He walked in the hospital, elder lawyer. Mm, mm -mm. He walks in the hospital with the expectation of 90% of the black people he treat are dead already. And the nurse is looking at them after, before this doctor came in, was looking at it like, these people aren't really that sick. 
I've treated people for years with respiratory issues, asthma, flu. They're not, they don't have COVID-19. And he says, listen, 90% of them will die. Mm. And this is why they're bringing these foreign East Indians and others in our hospital. That's another thing. We shouldn't have these people we don't know treating us. Where's Black Lives Matter on that? We need a doctor to be responsible that we know that if he kill one of our family, we know exactly where he lived to go deal with him. They had this, this demon coming from East India to kill our people. They probably put him right back on a plane mm -hmm. after killing our people in that hospital. What you guys have going on here isn't working. So what's the harm in trying? I don't expect any of these people to survive. 90% um, of them will die. I mean, it's just Oh, I gotta hear that again. And they come with a trap on them that kill more people than actually save. Uh -huh. So that's one. And he said that they don't work anyway. And I told him, well, obviously what you guys have going on here isn't working. So what's the harm in trying? I don't expect any of these people to survive. 90% of them would die. I mean, it's just maintaining. So I figured if it's assumed they're going to die anyway, yeah. just try Why not throw a few. Well, it's, you know, yeah. I, I don't know. That's, that's always an issue in medicine, whether you should just throw things, whether they're dying anyway or not. I. But if you could find the cure. Well, yeah, I mean, there's like no it, cure. So it, there's it, no yeah. antiviral therapy. The only way to do it is a cure. But, uh, there's or no treatment, I should say. Re yeah. Rephrase, you treatment. Could, you could <laughs> treat it, but, but, you know, it's... You have to have some scientific basis for whether these things are working or not. It's just throwing everything at them. You could make them worse. Uh huh. So huh. worse than know, death. Huh? Worse than death. Well, we said ninety percent, maybe the ten percent, maybe <laughs> maybe the <laughs> true. I don't know. Then he yeah. laughed. Uh. So, mm. but I mean, if there's no basis for it working, I mean, you wouldn't just try things just because. I mean. I would. Uh, I might. You could yeah. save my life. <laughs> yeah. Aaron Marie mm. Mm -hmm. military nurse in the military, in civilian life, goes to the epicenter of the epicenter, and eventually, because she's horrified at what she's seeing, decides to do something that very few people would do while still working there. A camera in her glasses, undercover, day after day. Aud now, we have these foreigners coming into our country with face masks on under the guise and smoke screen of COVID-19. Going into the hospitals where there's death floors that they call COVID-19 floors and which we're quarantined from our families, killed again. And convenient distraction from COVID murders is what we're witnessing right now. Protest? Are you going to protest now? After your mother had been put down like a dog, where was you and your mother was killed in a hospital through the COVID-19?